Welcome to Queen City Reefs and more. Thank you so much for joining me today on today's episode. My apologies for not putting a video out last week, but y'all have caught me during a very busy time of my life again, and this time it is coaching my daughter's softball team. And so not only am I having to be at the games, but at practices and then my son's games. And so today's video is actually going to be about the copper band butterfly. So I wanted to talk about both uh, butterflies. So for those that don't know, I have two. I have one in this tank and I have one in the Mega Matrix. And so this one I actually got from DrQuarantineReef.com. I believe it's the website. So he quarantines fish and treats them before sending them out. And I'm able to just easily put them in the tank and uh, not have to pray. Uh, at least that's a thought, right? We, of course, are trusting these individuals to do what they say they're doing and sending us a healthy fish. And so far, he has not proved me wrong. So far, this fish and all the other fishes that I've purchased from him have been perfectly healthy. That being said, this guy, I am not able to get him to eat. He has not eaten. I've dumped everything like frozen, mices, brine shrimp, and everything that you find in marine cuisine and the single packs. And, you know, I've even put in clams shells in here with clam meat in it. And I have not been able to get it to eat that. So all I see it do is pick at the rocks. So I'm assuming he's getting something from it. I do put copepods in here maybe once. I used to do once a week when I first got them, but now I'm doing once every two to three weeks because... They are a bit expensive and I do see copepods here and there and I'm assuming those are the ones that make it, you know, uh, <laughs> that this guy doesn't get to. The other thing I think he may be eating is Aptasia because I, I've definitely gotten rid of most of the Aptasia in here. I have not seen the peppermint shrimp that I put in here. So I did put peppermint shrimp too to try to combat the Aptasia. But then maybe a week or two later, I put this copper band and then after that, I started seeing Aptasia disappear. So the fact that this guy's still here and I have not been able to see the any of the peppermint shrimp, I'm thinking this is the corporate to having gotten all rid of the Aptasia, which would explain why he survived this long without eating anything else. I will continue putting copepods and I will continue trying to get him to feed on frozen or dry pellets or flakes, which I'm coming to think that it's impossible. But it is not. If you watch any of the other YouTubers, you'll see people like Vikings Reef who have successfully gotten fish to eat that are normally notorious to not eat in the tank. And therefore, people like him will keep me motivated to try and keep trying to get these finicky fish to eat. Along with him in this tank, I do actually have a, a sunburst antheus or also known as fathead antheus. I have a six line wrasse and I have two paired up clownfish that live in the anemones that you see in this tank. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention is every once in a while, like right now, look, I find tentacles like this of, of these anemones and I am not sure why. I'm assuming, I'm starting to think that, tell me, do they like sometimes release their own tentacles? Um, or could it be this guy right here pecking and, and chunking these things off? I'm not sure. Uh, I also found this of one of the rock flower anemones that seems to be splitting. It seems very stretched out from this area and then that way. And then you see how it has its tentacles on the side? There's no tentacles on there. All the other ones that I have in here are perfectly fine and healthy. So not sure what's going on with that guy right there. I don't know if it's, again, this guy or if it's maybe splitting. I've never heard of uh, rock flower anemones to split, but I could be wrong. I have sunkissed bounce uh, mushrooms. I have magic carpet mushrooms. I have that guy right there. Um, I have the toadstool. I have this Kenya tree, which again is not exactly the name, but that's the first thing I think of when I see it. I do have to uh, figure out what the name is. I have it stored somewhere. And that's what's going on with this tank. So let's go check out the other copper band butterfly. Here we have the other copper band butterfly. This is the one that was featured when I featured the acclimation box. It was on the acclimation box and it was eating mysis uh, along with other frozen foods. 
Now it doesn't eat all kinds of frozen foods because I've noticed that it won't touch anything that looks meaty. It normally will touch things that look stringy like the uh, mysis or the brine. Um, but when it's chunky food, it won't touch it. It has touched clams, so that's good. Um, it has not touched flakes and it has not touched pellets. So I do want to eventually get it to eat flakes and pellets because I, I feed a lot of that too. I, I feed a variety of diets, but frozen is not something I normally feed daily. It's every three days because in between that it's one day of pellets and one day of uh, flakes. But because of this guy and because of its diet, I have been feeding frozen more often than not, almost daily, just to make sure that this guy gets to eat daily. Uh, aside from that, it's doing perfectly well. Uh, no, this guy here I got from TSM Aquatics though, and it came at a hefty price because of it being acclimated to eat already. So they keep these in quarantine and they actually acc acclimate them to eat as well, uh, mysis. So by the time it comes to you, you don't have to worry about that. So I know this guy's eating. I've actually proved it with the video you saw last and I've actually been able to get it to eat in this tank. That being said, I mentioned on one of my previous videos that on that same previous video, I mentioned that I was very uh, scared that I was going to end up getting some kind of aggression issues with this other butterfly fish. And then with my yellow eye cold tang, which at the moment I don't see. There he is right there in the middle swimming by. And I was more scared that this guy would be very uh, aggressive towards it. But I have to say that I owe it a lot to that acclimation box and actually sticking with leaving them in there for at least a week to get all the fish accustomed to it. Because when I let them out, there was little to no aggression from either of those. Now, every once in a while, it will chase it around, but it's a quick chase and it, it normally will stop the chasing almost immediately after it started. So I haven't had an issue. I do see a nipped tail right there. So at some point, one of them did catch them but I normally in front of me I don't see any of that aggression and I'm happy with that I had mentioned that I was going to leave them for about a week or more and it ended up just being a week because one of the things I noticed is the just like the glass ends up being covered with algae the acrylic box as well did and there was no point in leaving them in there if the fish can't even see them there you go you saw some aggression right there but just a quick just a quick uh show of dominance I would assume uh, but yeah, so I ended up noticing that there was no, no point in leaving them longer being that they, other fish could not see them. And so what would be the point if uh, they can't see them? So I ended up just releasing them at night is what I did. So I waited till nighttime when it was lights out. I put them in there. I left a little light out because I wanted to, for him to be able to see around the tank so that maybe he could find his spot. And then by the next day, everything was good. I also made sure to release them on the weekend when I'm here on the weekend so that if there was any aggression, I could easily act on it versus doing it on a weekday and then having to worry about him while I'm at work. And by the time I get here, it might be too late. So just things to keep in mind. All right. Well, overall, again, both fish are doing well. This one here is eating mysis along with brine shrimp. And then also the other one is not. Now, one thing I am doing is I am actually trying to grow baby brine shrimp to adult size. And so far, so good. I bought this from Bulk Resupply, which is spirulina. And normally, uh, you, I just mix this in a cup of water, get it really mixed, and I put it in there, and that's supposed to be feeding them. So uh, it takes, uh, according to what I've read, about a week or so to get them to a noticeably bigger size. So right now, the only way you'll be able to see them is... Let's see if I shine some light. And these have been in here for about four days now. And so if you shine some light, there you go. That, those are the brine shrimp right there. So there's quite a bit floating around and you definitely don't want to overpopulate it because you gotta remember all these will grow up into more than double that size. And then we'll maybe crowd this place and maybe cause a tent crash. Uh, the goal here is to grow these out and see if I can get the copper band that's not eating anything to eat these. And then you, of course, uh, at a baby, at a baby brine shrimp stage, these are supposed to be really nutritious because of the egg sac and all that. But when they're adults, they're not nutritious at all. Therefore, you want to feed them things like spirulina, which is supposed to be very nutritious. 
And once you feed them that, then you, you should be able to then feed them right after to your fish too, so that they can get that same nutrition. All right, we're gonna end this video today with a quick shot of the Innovative Marine 15 gallon that I have yet to put any coral or anything in. And that for now is just because I decided that before I put anything in here, cause I already have an idea of what I'm actually gonna put in here. It's gonna be fish that actually jump out or that are known to jump out. And so because of that, I was like, you know what? I don't wanna put it without uh, having a lid. So I ordered the lid that goes with it. And I know it's gonna, it's gonna take away from the look but at this point, I'm more interested in keeping the fish in. And so once it comes in, which hopefully will be during this week, I'll have a video for y'all next week uh, to show you an update on this tank. <laughs>